Hey everyone, in this video I want to just quickly go over the uh, printed circuit board that was designed to control our underwater uh, vehicle. So to get started, um, we're going to go open a project. And this whole project, um, if you clone the GitHub repository, it will be in under PCBs and mainboard. And we can go ahead and just open this file. And let's go ahead and look at the schematic. So this is right here, our schematic, and we have a bunch of stuff going on. So I'll start with kind of like the biggest thing that's going on here, and that is the microcontroller unit. So for this whole project, um, I went with the Teensy 4.1. So this is just connected using uh, header pins, and the Teensy 4.1 just has plenty of uh, memory. It runs at, um, Right now, mine is running at 528 megahertz, which is uh, super fast. It's plenty fast. I have a lot of memory to work around with um, to run like a lot of the um, a lot of the neural networks that's used for um, object detection um, on the microcontroller. So it's it has plenty of power and plenty of memory to do a bunch of really cool stuff. Um, so anyways, this is just super simple, just all our pins are connected here uh, to all these GPIO pins. So anyways, um, we can go ahead and go to our sensors, what we have here. So for the um, accelerometer and gyroscope, I'm using the Bosch BMI-088. Um, really out of familiarity, I use this on the thrust vector control rocket. So it's just something that I've used for a while. Super simple, it's connected through I squared C and um, it just measures acceleration and gyroscope. It has super low noise too, so it's a really solid and a reliable sensor that I've used um, a lot in the past. So uh, right here we have the magnetometer, which is the LIS3MDLTR. Um, this is the first time I'm actually using a magnetometer like pretty much ever. And this is just one that a lot of people I know have used. So um, there's some libraries that um, that are open source libraries that I can use to just um, run the whole interface to communicate with this board. Once again, it's just connected through I squared C, and um, we're using a data ready interrupt. So this actual interrupt pin gives us a lot of other information as well, which we don't really kind of need. So we just need a data ready signal which is why our interrupt pin is just connected right here. Um, moving on here we have our barometer which is the BMP388. Um, once again it's just out of familiarity that I chose to use this sensor. Um, I think the BMP388 is actually now discontinued and it's just the BMP390 but um, the BMP390, BMP388 they have the same footprint and everything and they're very similar devices, so uh, it shouldn't matter like if you end up trying this project out for yourself if you use a BMP390. So once again, this is connected through I squared C. Um, so that's kind of the three I squared C sensors that we have connected here. Um, of course, we have our pull-up resistors. Um, so this one it says MS5803, which I think. Let me go ahead and look this up. I I like completely forgot, it's been such a while, MS5803, which is, oh, this is one of the pressure sensors that I was going to use, and this was going to, this was an external board that I was going to connect uh, through I squared C, as you can see, that's connected to the uh, I squared C bus, but honestly, I, I actually went with a different sensor, so this is really more of just like um, some header pins just to connect any I squared C device. It just says MS5803. In fact, I'll just change it out right now. Um, so anyways, we have another set of header pins for more I squared C devices because um, it's just good to have a lot of little headers to connect different devices. Um, especially because with our underwater vehicle, a lot of the sensors aren't going to be on the board directly because they're going to be outside the vehicle in the water. So we have to have a lot of connectivity to connect to external um, devices, which is why we have so many header pins here. Next of all, we have um, we have just a header pin for the external camera. So I'm using the OV5642. I guess I can pull that up here. Um, 
OD5642, which is like, um, I think it's a, yeah, it's a five megapixel uh, camera here. Uh, super easy uh, interface. It just connects through SPI and um, I squared C. So this is what we use to like um, detect a bunch of objects and stuff, and it just connects through these headers right here. These little blue text things here is just um, the I squared C address, like the default I squared C address that I have these devices set to. Because in the last design um, for that I made for a different project, I accidentally didn't pay attention to these addresses, so I had address collision. So I just wrote these down just to make sure that none of that happened. And if I came back to connect other devices, I could easily see which um, addresses are actually used up. So moving on here, we have, um, it says I squared C, this is actually SPI. So this is just an SPI set of S, uh, SPI headers to connect um, devices through SPI through header pins. Um, right here, um, it says HC12, which is a, it's like a, it's a radio model that we're going to use to connect to the submarine and um, um, connect externally because this is going to be on the surface on the water. Um, this is a long range radio module that just connects through serial. But in all honesty, this is just really just a set of, we actually decided not to use the HC12. And this is just a set of um, serial pins that um, we can use to once again connect to other devices serial or UART is another way to just um, really easily just communicate with other devices same with right here this is for a GPS module and that um, um, connects through serial so this these are our, our two uh, serial devices so uh, moving on here um, we can take a look I think I want to look at the power section first here so um, we have this is one of the things that I really kind of regret doing, and well, this is using a linear regulator here. This is a linear uh, 5 volt regulator, which connects to our uh, battery. And um, linear reg this whole project is like using this uh, whole way to be more efficient. It's like very oriented at being very efficient. And Ironically, linear regulators are, aren't very efficient at all, and they don't give you as much current um, as you can get, and they, they kind of just let off a lot of the energy as heat. Um, so what I actually ended up doing was I bought an external 5-volt uh, buck converter, which just connects directly to the power here, uh, which just connects directly to the 3.3-volt regulator here. So we actually don't use this. It is on the board but we actually just use an external breakout uh, buck converter just to be a bit more power efficient and provide uh, power for like our stepper motors. Um, we have, so these two um, regulators here is to provide uh, plus and minus uh, three volts. And this is used for a very specific sensor, which we'll get to. But yeah, this one provides plus three volts. This is minus three volts. And then, of course, we have our voltage regulator, so we can read how much uh, voltage we have coming in. So the reason we have those two 3-volt regulators is because we need it for our TDS sensor, which stands for Total Dissolved Solids. So this um, just connects to a probe that is outside of the, of the submarine, and this will tell us how many solutes are in the water surrounding the whole uh, submarines in parts per million. Um, I think this is like super duper cool. Like it'll give us, um, it'll give us like really cool information just about um, how many particles, particulates are in the water. And it just connects through the the probe connects through uh, this little uh, set, this little header pin set here, and it it goes to it goes into this circuit which provides an analog output signal which we just read with our um, and interpret with our microcontroller. Um, so right here this whole stuff is for our our whole stepper motor so if you've seen the videos before we have a dive stepper which uses uh, which uh, controls the ballast tank to uh, push water out and pull water in so we can sink or float and then we have one for pitch control but if you watch the previous videos we actually ended up we're, we're actually not using this whole pitch control thing. It is all connected in the actual board, but we don't actually use it. So I guess if we need like a spare stepper motor, we can just use this. But 
these two are the exact same circuits here you can kind of see they're the same circuit and um, here it says we're using the A4988 which is a stepper motor driver but we I actually used this at first but it was very unreliable so I moved on to the TMC2208 which has the exact same footprint the same pinouts and everything like that so it's and it's the TMC2208 it's pretty much a drop-in replacement but it's much more quiet and I found it to be a lot more reliable I think the only difference is this sleep pin is actually another pin that indicates if there's an error with the um, actual breakout. So that's the only difference between the, the A4988 and the TMC2208. Um, to control how much, to have current limit control uh, to the steppers, what we have here is a potentiometer. And um, what we do is we, with this header set of header pins, we just read the voltage. And based off the voltage, um, we, we turn the potentiometer, change the resistance, which will uh, control the, the whole uh, current limit. Um, this is definitely like not the best way. It's like really hard to like connect the multimeter to these header pins while also turning this tiny potentiometer. So I think in the future, I might just have a, just an IC potentiometer that's connected to the microcontroller and have the microcontroller just automatically uh, limit the current for us, but that um, is probably a good idea for the future. But for now, it does work. It's just like really hard to to uh, set the current limiting. Um, and these these four pins just out. These are our four uh, uh, pins that go to our stepper motor, which is a NEMA, I think, 17. Um, and then right here we have limit switches because um, stepper mo unlike servo motors, you don't know the like exact position of a stepper motor. So we use these limit switches to uh, calibrate our whole, um, our setup on on um, when we start the whole program up. I think the other videos like the, the graphical user interface video really show you how the limit switches work. And um, other than that, of course, we just have two RGB LEDs, a signal LED and a power LED super simple and then we have a buzzer um, just like indicate errors and stuff so it's super the whole schematic is like really simple uh, we can close this and go save our changes and then go over to our printed circuit board so this is the whole printed circuit board and um, just a disclaimer like I'm a total amateur at like electronics and all this stuff so if you have any criticism, any advice for me, I'll just leave it in the comments for sure. Like I'm very new to this, so this is kind of just, a, it's not the best, this is definitely like not the best board. But anyways, this is the whole printed circuit board. Um, I can kind of go from, I guess from the top down. This is our uh, connector for the uh, five megapixel camera. Um, right here we just have SPI headers. Um, I squared C and then uh, serial headers here. This is the BMP388 pressure sensor. Um, and to be honest, we don't really need a pressure sensor inside the whole uh, underwater vehicle because this is inside the whole submarine, so it doesn't measure the external pressure. But I thought it'd be really cool to like measure pressure as the ballast moves in and out. So I actually included it in the board. It doesn't like take up any pins or anything like that. It's not too much of a hassle, so. Anyways, next we have here the uh, accelerometer and gyroscope package, the BMI-088, and then we have the magnetometer here. Um, we have our LED and our buzzer. Uh, this, this right here is some more I2C header pins. This right here is our TMC 4.1. This is where it kind of just, uh, we can put, insert that. Uh, right here we have um, another set of serial pins. This is the uh, stepper motor driver. Um, whole circuit here and then this is where the stepper motor connects this is a limit switch uh, connection right here and for limit switch it doesn't really matter the polarity at all and if um, so like but we I just put these here like just in case we want to use these uh, digital pins for something else it's good to know um, the polarity of these pins this is our second stepper motor driver circuit um, literally identical to the one above here. Um, this whole thing down that's going on down here is our stepper, or not our stepper, our 
our total dissolved solid sensor um, circuit. This is where the probe attaches and this is the whole, uh, these are all the ICs that give us, that measure how many particulates are in the water. This is where our battery connects. We have um, our 5 volt regulator that we don't really use and then <clears throat> Um, this right here is our 3.3 volt regulator. Um, this is our, I think this is our plus, yeah, this is our plus 3 volt regulator, and this is our minus 3 volt regulator. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Super simple. Uh, I can pull up the 3D model here. This is a 3D model of the whole board. Um, so it's looks pretty accurate it looks really similar to our board which really doesn't matter but this is actually used in our whole CAD model so it's super useful to have so anyways like I said I'm a very I'm a novice at best at um, electronics and all that stuff so if you have any like advice any uh, criticism just put it down in the comments I'd love to hear what you guys think and um, all the files for this, all the 3D models, all that is in our GitHub, which is linked down in the description. But um, yeah, other than that, hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me what you guys think about um, these kind of, I guess this is kind of a deepish dive. Uh, it's a really, it's kind of a simple project, so there's not much to really dive deep into. Uh, but like I said, just tell, tell me what you think down in the comments. And um, if you guys are interested in more stuff like this, just uh, go ahead and subscribe. But other than that, have a great day.